Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Uh, back today with a special guest, uh, Michael Mapson. Hey, That's Michael. Me. <laughs> uh, so this is, of course, Naya Depps, uh, very similar to the version that Michael was running for the SCG 5K, uh, but has made a few little changes uh, that I thought I would, we would go over. Uh, first one, I guess, starting from the mana base, is trying out Blast Zone. Um, which is a, a really cool card. Uh, it's really nice to have, I guess, removal through night. Um, and for something like Blast Zone on one, hidden Reclaimer isn't usually the worst when it's you know going to be trading with a bunch of elves or maybe Delver and a DRC or something else. Um, did you have anything in mind for the Blast Zone? Yeah, like you said, it's kind of mainly for Delver. It's also like incidentally good versus elves. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with it so far but from what i've seen it's been pretty good i've also uh seen it kind of blow out death and taxes too and you know i actually kind of feel favored in most of those matchups i mean not elves but i feel favored versus delver and death and taxes but like a little bit of uh extra help in that regard it also can be good in the mirror yeah definitely especially when um I think Lands was one of the matchups where I brought it in against, and it was or had had it against. Uh, where just being able to deal with X. Um, the other card was Scavenging Ooze, which I think a lot of people have been on Hearse recently. Uh, and I was I was telling you this morning I was watching uh, Hallow Newton, who had brought it back into the Elf seventy five. Um, is this just to have a more kind of uh, endurance, of course, is, is great for graveyard matchups, but is very kind of the one-time trick pony. Um, is Ooze there for some of the matchups where you might want that ongoing pressure to the graveyard? Yeah, kind of. I think, it, like you said, it's very similar to the philosophy of Hearst. I actually started trying it a little bit before Hearst. Um, and the other thing is just like, one of my biggest complaints about this deck is it feels like there's no good to Um Especially like against Delver post board, where like I'm cutting the Sylvan libraries. It's like you have Green Sun for, for Elvish Reclaimer, but like I don't even love doing that early against them because I don't necessarily want to put Elvish Reclaimers into play when Lightning Bolt's still good. I mean, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but like it's so situational. And then like, you know, I've cut the Sylvan libraries. It's like, what am I doing on two mana? And it just like feels really bad not having anything on that curve. And one card doesn't make the hugest difference in the world but it's something and it's something you can green sun zenith for for slightly less it's yeah okay it hasn't like helped me but like it's fine yeah that's fair enough in uh in maverick i've been trying out builds with uh, a fair amount of endurance uh and ooze is kind of been one of the cards that for a long time has kind of been a sacred cow <clears throat> A little bit like Gadok Teague, so it has been hard to cut it. Um, and I have been trying out lists without it, but it, it does come back sometimes where you just you wish you had a uh, that two drop you can find through Green Suns, uh, and b just that ongoing pressure or even the life gain sometimes is is a little bit relevant. Yeah, and randomly like shrinking a Dragon's Rage Channeler is like pretty good. Yeah, yeah, especially when something like a um, a bauble is the reason it is a 3-3 three, three instead of a 1-1. A one, one. Um, then being able to turn it back on through an artifact is, is pretty tough. Eventually, I also want to try Scrub Ranger in that slot. I know it's a card you're very fond of. Nice. Uh, I haven't gotten to try it yet, but I, I'm very curious to try that too. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, getting the extra uh, activations of Reclaim or Knight is pretty cool. And then, of course, with the Yavimaya being able to return any land is also... Uh, pretty strong um, and pro blue you know can't be bounced blocks Delva blocks Merktide which is cool um, even just being a flyer is, is kind of nice as well there's been a few times where my opponent's been at sort of 21 life so 
to have that extra one damage is, is always pretty cool. Um, have you ever thought about another color? Do you, I guess right now the red blasts are, are really strong in the current metagame, but are there any reasons for that you would think you'd, you'd splash black or blue? So I've played black before um, playing Plague Engineer. I felt like the elves matchup was really difficult uh, since including Glacial Chasm, my mat, like my percentage in that matchup has skyrocketed, uh, which feels a little weird to say because I just cut Glacial Chasm, but else has been like largely on the downswing and I would rather have cards that are good against Storm because I've been on the upswing. Uh, I forgot to mention I've also been playing a Chaotic Activity in my sideboard too. Um, cool. But yeah, I've definitely considered black for Plague Engineer and, you know, Thoughtseize, but I don't know that Thoughtseize is great and you get the same kind of effects out of the Deafening Silence. Like, obviously they're not the same card, but you know, they're kind of for the same matchups. Yeah. Like being slightly better against, like, Reanimator, though. Um, and then I haven't really considered blue. Like, I know I've seen people play it for Clusterstorm. I just feel like Pyroblast and Red Blast are better. Uh, yeah that's the same sort of thing is, yeah and they're so much more versatile like one of the things i like about power blasts is not only are they my counter spells but they're also additional removal for murk time like when you have fluster storm yeah it's better in the combo matchups than power blasts is but it's just you don't get those cards and then i feel like when i'm building my sideboard i want like 20 cards in it and so red blast and power blast kind of function as my like they used to play path to exiles and it kind of takes that role while also still being good against combo. So I just don't feel the need for blue. Um, I know some people have also played with like Leobold. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, Leo is pretty cool. I've been moving towards like a, a, a wet Abzan build with Leo in the main deck. It's just like a Green Sun's way to um, have something that's pretty good against the uh, mid range decks, but also just pretty good at slowing down combo and being more of a, a speed bump. Yeah. Uh, and then, no, Glacial Chasm. Is that something you felt was just good for the, the online meta where it's not really needed? Yeah, I just, that card's mainly for else as far as I'm concerned. And I just, like I said, I didn't think else was going to be as prevalent uh, moving forward as Storm was. I could definitely see Glacial Chasm coming back in at some point, but for now it's gone. Uh, last thing was, I think for a while you were playing around with the fifth, fifth fetch. Yeah. Um, I think I cut it a while ago for the Besavian. I think that's correct. Yeah, I, I really liked playing five fetches. I know... Um, most people didn't, but it just, it helps Elvis Reclaimer get turned on a little bit more often. Um, and I don't know, people were playing the third Yavamaya, and I just, like, was not happy playing three. I, I felt like I would draw multiples too often, and then I would be upset. Like, the card's obviously very good when it's in play, but just drawing multiples is so bad, and I didn't want to be in that spot. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a really good point. And it's, it's pretty awesome as well to see that with... Um, a lot of the, the nihilists out there, I think the mana base is kind of where, other than the sideboard, is where the most creativity is in numbers. Like, some people play three depths, some people try to find room for a different thing for that um, in, in like, a utility land. Um, but yeah, it has been nice to see the, uh, the move towards double step pretty much just stick with Green White Maverick as it's been around. Yeah, double step is uh, I don't know. People are like still surprised by it all the time, but it been around for a while and it's just consistently been good. Yeah, which is awesome. Um, it, obviously, being a non-blue deck is quite cool for uh, the non-blue people in the format. Um, and of course, yeah, as Chat pointed out, you lent your deck, your exact seventy-five, to a person on the Sunday for another SCG challenge, which took out the, the the tournament as well, which is really cool. Yeah, it's uh, the deck's also making an appearance at Minneapolis, so hopefully it can, uh, hopefully it can win a third time in a row. That would be uh, the dream. 
when you say the deck is making an appearance, do you mean your 75? Yeah, I um I will not be going, but somebody is stopping by this week to pick up my cards. Very cool. That would be a uh, that would be unheard of. I'm not sure if like even a, a two-time winning 75 has worked. I think a three-time would be uh yeah, really breaking breaking uh, some of the boundaries with uh, a record like that. Um, I think the only other card that people talk about is Mox Diamond. And Mox Diamond, for a lot of people, would probably see it as kind of a four of or a none of, a little bit like Aether Vial in a way. But um, perhaps I think most people uh, are pretty happy with the three because it's not really a card you always want turn one because you're not looking to turbo most of the time. Um, and three kind of sits in that position where you're going to see it when you want it. Yeah, I think, I mean, that about sums it up. I Like, I kind of do want it in all of my opening hands, but I very, very rarely want to see two copies. Like, the only time I think two copies is good is, like, exactly when you can go, like, turn one night of the row. Um, any other mm. time is just not good in multiple. And, like, in lands, people play four, but you play the life in the loom, so, like, you always have cards to pitch to it, so I think it just works out much better. Um, it just doesn't make sense to play four in the stack yeah yeah uh nice let's get into some games uh i will turn off my sound as well nice uh when's the last time you played on mtgo uh i played the showcase challenge a few days ago now um it did not go ideal but did you... that's okay i um <laughs> i had a lot to do around the house so i was like Kind of not super invested. I ain't, I was in it for a while. I ended up hunting in round six, I think, against uh, Daniel Nunes. I ended up top eighting. Um, so it was a yeah, little be unfortunate because I thought I was going to win. And I was like in pretty good, uh, pretty good contention at top eight. But I don't know. These things happen. It is what it is. Yeah, big shout out to Eli, who's in chat, who top edited with Goblins, another travel deck, which is very cool. Um, uh, so, <laughs> Eli, I see you asking about our match. Um, I, I'm kind of hesitant to say this because it sounds really mean, but um, Noons had me like dead for a while and just was like missing it left and right. Um, and I was able to come back <laughs> and... Um, but then I like screwed up on like the last, like the last turn. I like fetched for a dried arbor because I was like additional blocker. It'll let me get in an additional attack. And then I forgot about uh, the flying haste lever, so I ended up dying to that. But it was just like Nunez. Okay, um, that I mean that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it was just a very long game three. Nice. So this, this is going to sound really dumb. If I had seen the Enye on the N, I would have pronounced it correctly, but it was just like never there. So I was like, I don't know. I guess this is how it's pronounced. But like, <laughs> I guess you wouldn't see the Enye on, uh, on Moto. Uh, I'm going to say this is a keep. Something like a turn one dried up a turn two reclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. I love this hand. Nice. Are you pretty aggressive with like green suns for dryad given like you have a three drop or? I am, yeah. I mean, it's if I have a second Green Sun Zenith, I almost always just go for the Dryad Arbor on one. Nice. And I kind of expect it to die a lot of the times, but like if it gets lightning bolted, that's one step closer to getting my three four uh, Reclaimer. It's like my opponent didn't really progress either; if they're not playing a threat. Yeah, um, I would assume Savannah here. I would just get the basic forest actually, because you already have okay. the planes in hand. Like, you have yeah. multiple white forces, so. If they waste your savannah and like bolt the dried arbor then you're pretty sad yeah that's very true and happens uh, a fair amount against delva which uh, i think in the blind you could probably put it there yeah i just kind of run with the assumption everyone's on delver for better or worse um definitely some options here delta pass doesn't really tell us too much i for some reason ought to assume some sort of combo deck but um, so i feel like if it was a combo deck they probably lead with like a ponder or preordain and i just 
it's hard for me to imagine they keep a uh, turn one polluted delta go. Hmm. Yeah, unless it's something like Reanimator with like end step and two, but um, could be. The the big question is like, is it Green Suns for Reclaimer and then like hold up crop, or is it like attack with Dried Arbor? I like I like Green Sun for one personally. Yeah. Um, and then notably, I would tap the Dried Arbor. Okay. I know it's a really small thing. I just the one damage is not super likely to matter. I can't remember like who said this, but a long time ago it was pointed out to me like if you have like a conditional mana source like a triad arbor or a creature, like you always want to tap that in case it dies and then you don't have the mana when you get it. Interesting. So probably gonna be Doomsday. I think like a, a Death Shadow deck would probably go for Underground Sea straight away. Street Wraith not really seeing play outside of Doomsday and for those still on Death Shadow. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, how do you like the Doomsday matchup? Uh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Endurance only does so much, and it's tough because, like, I think a lot of players would look at this and go, oh, they probably play Endurance. That's probably their way to interact. So, the piles... Um, like I've had a player play Torment Crypt against me, which is pretty cool tech because they can Torment Crypt themselves in response to endurance. I don't Just think I've actually won a match against Doomsday yet. Yeah, I think the ones that I've won have been like quite lucky, like the double endurance with double green card or. Um, oh, I think the the good one is like double wasteland my opponent. Like next turn we can. Oh, we can't... Oh, we can double wasteland. With the crop on the excavator, I'm trying to think. We would have to draw a Mox Diamond. Yeah. Because three mana for excavator, one mana for crop rotation means we have a land drop that has to be made. Yeah. But yeah, Doomsday is tough. Doomsday is tough because they can play around a lot of, like, the classic kind of combo hate cards. Like... Deafening Silence is fine as like a speed bump, but it's not as big of a speed bump as other combo decks. Yeah, this is like the matchup that you would want the Foster Storms we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Have you um played around with uh, like Torpor Orb much in the board? Oh, I, I have played Torpor Orb. It's been a while. Um, yep. I don't know. It's like one of those things where that card is good against Death and Taxes and it's good against this deck but I was already beating death and taxes and I was still losing to this deck even with it. So it's somewhat hard to justify. Yeah, very true. You gotta be pretty flexible with your sideboard cards and... Mm. Yikes. Look, uh, just a, a good, ooh. Um... Sadly, no way to kill it off crop, but that would have been pretty sweet. I wonder if they did do a double oracle pile. All right, uh, cards that I like. The Blasts, the Deafening Silences, the Oof, the Endurance. Uh, what do you think of a card like Choke? I would probably bring it in. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those cards that might just do a little bit more than something else in the deck. Yeah, like you have a lot of dead cards, like the swords and the endings can like automatically come out. The Scooze is very bad. And then I'm like pretty happy cutting a knight. Yeah, that's cool. Always nice as well to have like, you know, bring in a three drop, cut a three drop. Uh, would you ever cut a land? Yeah, I cut a land actually pretty often. So like, I could definitely see cutting like the blast zone doesn't do anything here, or like, you never need the second Sidiri step in this matchup. Yeah, very true. Um, 
Maybe blast zone. Yeah, chat, the choke is pretty slow, but I think it's a case of uh, doing something that uh, is better than kind of a card that might be a bit more vanilla in the matchup. Uh, like Scavenging Ooze. It's a beater, but uh, probably not the beater we want. <laughs> and like, you can just get them with choke sometimes. I've definitely had opponents who have gone, you know, island, underground, see something else, and we've just gone choke. And yeah, sometimes it's just not a card they're really uh, ready for, which is always nice as well. All right. Hmm. Okay. Thoughts? I mean, none of our hands are good, but uh, Deafening Silence could potentially go a long way. Yeah, especially with like one piece of the combo, a green suns to find a threat. But open otherwise. I mean, we have like access to red mana as well. There's been times where I've had like a pyroblast hand, but have been light on on red mana. The I find the deck does mulligan pretty well. I think but the deck mulligans well. There's so few cards that I think are impactful in this matchup. I would probably just keep this. Yeah. And to think if this was a, a six and we dropped the step, like this is still a pretty fine six. All right, opponent. Uh, yes. Force. All right. That's uh, pretty unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Okay. Um, probably just getting a, uh, Reclaimer here. Yeah. I think it like, I think the, the, the Green Sun's target that's, that does have some sort of impact is Endurance, but sadly isn't that great at Sorcery Speed and is a fair way away. So, um, like Reclaimer turning this Flagstones into Duck Depths is, is a real clock, which is nice. All right. This could be good for us. Yeah. I mean, if they kind of got the island to play around like a wasteland on the underground sea, this could be quite strong. But it, it is tough to not have like uh, two points of interaction. So having like another green card to turn on the live draw of drawing endurance as well or having endurance but no green card is this the only artwork of doomsday on mtgo um now i'm curious <laughs> yeah look i know min's in chat so i'm sure he will know from uh from maxing out. There are two others. There we go. Interesting. I feel like this is the one I always see too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if like, cause I'm a huge fan of original art. So I'm never sure if it's like my opponent just trying to get that little bit of an edge on me. Oh, they bring in chain. Oh, we get a turn. Sweet. I'm going to slam a choke. That's pretty nice as well, just in case our opponent does have like a daze in hand. Like, do they keep in, there's one daze. Maybe they just kept in the one daze as like a pile uh, tutor. I don't think there's any downside to it, which is nice. And is that all force of will, all four force wills in there? Yeah, that's looking good. Oh uh, no, it's a force of negation. Uh, sadly, yes. But. We can always hope. 
Um, probably just this step. Play the stage. This is either a force or a concession. This, <laughs> it's feast or famine. Yes, and it's feast. <laughs> so good. And like, that's exactly the spot we we're talking about where yeah, like it's not, it's not like a card that I sideboard just for Doomsday or put in the sideboard for Doomsday, but having that splash is, is really nice. Uh, sadly, not really changing anything, just, just running this back. Um, but I think on the draw, probably wanting more of a, a blast hand. It'll be interesting to see if they go for a, a Cavern of Souls play. <laughs> Look, Choke was good last turn, but I don't think we're keeping <laughs> this hand. <laughs> yeah, do nothing until turn three is a, it's a big stretch. Hmm. Well, th this is a, a tough one, because we have... Uh, like crop into a white source for deafening silence. And then we have a crop for dark depths for a turn three kill. Really sucks. This forest this isn't just a planes. Um, I mean, I would, I would still keep. Yeah. Is it the green suns we're dropping here? And just keeping that kind of like turn my deafening silence turn three combo? Probably. It feels so wrong. I hate keeping crop rotation over green sun zenith, but I think contextually it's correct. Yeah. Hopefully uh, opponent's not aggressive on just kind of uh, forcing spells that we kind of care about and just keeping them for things like Deafening Silence. Um, seeds over Meltdown is because Seeds hits, like, Kappa Cannoneer. This is the big thing. It's also actually slightly easier on the mana, um, which is, sounds weird because it's double color versus one color. But especially with Mox Diamond being shut off, and like Plateau's not a great draw. Also, it's a cooler card. <laughs> uh, they Contrary chose to popular belief, style does matter. There's a no shuffle. Okay, well, there's that green suns, which is nice. Um, I think it's just going to be forest into Savannah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, I didn't even realize how low they mulliganed. Oh, either. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I guess we might as well get the f extra land in. Oh, just a straight up. Hmm. Okay, well, that's a spell for the turn. They get Doomsday. So they have one card in hand and it's Doom... Oh no, one card on top and it's Doomsday. Um, I would actually just Wasteland them here. Yeah, I liked it as well because it has to be like Ritual into Doomsday for them to do anything. Um, I mean, I think I would just double Wasteland them. Off the crop and then start rebuilding? Yeah, I think we win that race. I mean, that might just be greedy. I love it. I love greed. Oof. Nice. Like, I'm slightly concerned they're... I was going to say, slightly concerned their last card is a land, but... I think we win this race. Yeah, and it's nice if we go, like, Yav here into Dried Arbor, because if we draw into a crop, we can then hold up Yav with Deathwing Sage and then Duck Depths. So we only have one crop rotation left. I would probably yes. keep the Grinthon Zenith for... 
Reclaimer? Turns, like, next turn. To, yeah. Okay. Nice. Huh. We could keep the green suns for <coughs> oof, potentially. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I guess we should tap like this. I guess Dark Ritual I didn't have to uh, uh, worry about because of the deafening silence. So the only way they'll get into three mana was through uh, like land into Doomsday. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that either. I guess we only needed to fire off one wasteland. Okay. Wait, hold on. Yeah. I don't think we need to do anything here, right? Because on their turn, they can play the Doomsday. And then... Can they... Can they kill us even for the following... Like... It would have to be something like uh, end of end of turn the chain of vapor we saw on deafening silence. But yeah. yeah, I I'm also not gonna do safe, but I think we're safe. Yeah. Do you like just holding up, uh, going for dark depths off the reclaimer? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yes, they multi three. Nothing. I always get scared on MTGO that I'll click the wrong land. Oh, it'll like do a, a very... Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I think I could definitely attack there, but as a, like a 0.1% chance of something. Yeah. Okay. They obviously just didn't have a line where they could get rid of this. Nice. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Taking down Doomsday. <laughs> Too good. Uh, what's your local like? Do you play much local paper? And do you have like a weekly scene? Yeah, I um, I play a lot of paper magic locally. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have a great store right down the street, alternate universes. Um, so every... Basically every Monday I go play modern, um, and they have like generally somewhere between fifteen and thirty people for modern. Uh, nice. We've had as much as thirty-eight. And Very then, cool. Uh, on Tuesdays I think they fire pioneer or are trying to. I don't think they've been super successful yet. Um, but Tuesdays I record a podcast, and then on Fridays, uh, every Friday we do Legacy F and M, and. Uh, we get anywhere from like eight to twenty people for that. Nice. Wait, you report a re record a podcast? What podcast do you record? <laughs> it's a shameless plug. Um, you know, every Tuesday I record the Dark Depths podcast with my friend Billy. It releases every Wednesday morning, talking about modern and legacy. Oh wow! Where can people find it? Uh, wherever podcasts are find or found. So iTunes, Stitcher, like we released through Anchor, so it just goes everywhere. Nice. Also very funny to play against Granham. Yes, a D&T player was on the stream the other day. Uh, and this seems like a pretty great hand against D&T. 
it does rely on the Moxon for green, but having an answer to both like Vile or Mum on turn one is pretty cool, and to back it up with Reclaimer. Getting some nice MTGO vibes. Killed, uh, good luck. But yeah, I think this is pretty strong. Yeah, I would keep this. I actually love this matchup. It's like so intricate. I think it's really hard from both sides. I think oh. first, like, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> um, well, we have been bamboozled. <laughs> we have been bamboozled. This is fine. You know, to be fair, we still have the mocks and the planes to play around Blood Moon effects, and the, I guess, once we get rid of this through ending, we can do some shenanigans. Yeah, I mean, I actually think this matchup is good too. Hmm. Um. So how do how do we actually get rid of the Charles with prismatic ending? For those of you who don't know, including myself right now, because I am blinking. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to play the Mox Diamond, we're going to discard Sejiri's Step, and then we are going to um, play the Planes and play Prismatic Ending for two. Nice. Look at that. Are you a level two judge? I am. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. And this matchup used to be really good when we played Knight of Autumn in the main deck. I know some people are on Outland the Marauder. Um, but yeah, this matchup used to be so good. Okay. Uh, it's just going to be Swords and the Loyalist play the Reclaimer play stage. Yeah. Notably, I would hold off on the Swords uh, for now, just... Just in case, uh, like, I would wait until they're about to go to beginning of combat, see if they, um, you know, try to play, like, a Goblin Ravel Master. Cool. I mean, I think if they had the Ravel Master, they would have already played it, but I would rather hit that than the War Boss. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah, so if we get priority here, we can Swords it before they go to combat and get this little bonus. Hmm. Yeah, because I assume if they did have a creature, they would have done it. Unless they're like galaxy braining me when, when now they'll play the Rebel Master. <laughs> and obviously, Reclaimer. Oh, Fury. Okay. Reclaim is so strong in this matchup as well because of the uh, sacrifice a land, not a green white. Ooh. That's a, a very risky, or I mean, Trinisphere. Mm. <laughs> like, we could even, like, besage their city of traders if we wanted, and then they're kind of locked under their own Trinisphere. Yeah, they only they only have one card left. Like, I, I don't know that that's the correct play, but like, it just seems risky. Hmm. Yeah, that's very true as well. If they um, if they do play a land, they lose the city. And I, I think it would have to be a four drop if they were going to do that. Might just go Savannah Pass. Maybe keep the procedure if they like draw a chalice. Yeah, I like that. And maybe even just end step make the stage a. S well, we don't really need a second planes. Interesting. Wow, they just lose it. Huh. 
this is pure ignorance here, but is there a reason to play the land there and not just hold up, uh, like have the access to four mana at instant speed in a way, like have the lands in hand and just wait till you draw into something to cast? I'm assuming the last card in their hand is the land. And so okay. I think just getting to the point where you have Den of the Bugbear active is probably more valuable. Oh, we can copy this. Oh, and we can start attacking because the Mox Diamond. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes. If there's anything better in Magic. Yes, Rima first for me. Never <laughs> had a Den of the Bugbear. I've never beat Doomsday. <laughs> it's four mana to activate? Nice. Very cool. Just like, these are the little things in Legacy that I love. Because you don't really think of it until you see it and you're like, oh, that can copy that. And it costs four, so they still can't activate it and block, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I Ooh. bring the city of the traders by them. Um, we have the twenty twenty next turn, or uh, like at the the end step of theirs, because the Besaju is the third land for this to crop rotate into Duck Depths, and then we have two mana left over with Stage. Four mana, ooh, five, sure. Potentially Fury. Um, this is fine. Nice, no cards in hand. Just gonna do this now. Talk taps. Nice. Nice. Pretty pretty slow start from them. Like, turn one, Chalice. Turn two, Goblin's good, but it's not like Blood Moon, Rabble Master, go. <coughs> Which is pretty tough. To be fair as well, Greenham was uh, said in the chat they were unsure if uh, if we would have like good answers to Blood Moon, so they kind of went for a more, I guess, aggressive route, potentially. Uh, Force of Vigor. Good card. Liberator. Oof are probably the big three. I don't like Oof. I mean, why, why are we bringing in Oof? Yeah, it's fair. Um, I guess it's really only Chrome Mox, right? Yeah, but I think it hitting our Mox Diamond matters more than it hitting their Chrome Mox. Yeah. Good one. Uh, Bog. Pretty easy cut. Yep. <laughs> um... And then I think potentially I usually cut a library, seeing how aggressive they usually are. That's that makes sense. I so I typically cut crop rotation just because um oh it's chalice. Yeah. No, that's fine. Library also makes sense to me. Crops, I guess the upside of crop is like uh if you do get like a savannah in play and they moon you, you can turn it into a basic. I don't know, I mean, I'm fine cutting either one. Nice. Uh, what's what's the math as well with Mox Diamond? How many lands would you go down to before you start cutting cutting Moxen? I feel like that's a question I should know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I just, like, don't cut Mox in any matchup. I, I know some people do, but I, that's just... it's in my deck for a reason. Hmm. Yeah, because, like, um, it's great to see versions of Depths without Moxon do well, but it's so different when you have that turn one library or some other crucial kind of, like, turn one play with the Moxon that you just would not get without them. Do you own the fourth Moxon paper? Um, 
I, I actually sold it. <laughs> yes. Commitment. So sometimes I regret it, but like, whatever. If I if I ever need it, I can buy it back. Yeah, that's very true. Also, it's been a while, but I'm very glad to hear that you got away from your tire incident unscathed. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. That was a... Uh... That was interesting, to say the least. Mm. For those in chat who are unaware, I believe Michael was in an accident, or at least uh, in a situation where a wheel came off your car while you were driving it. Yes, which um, cars function a lot better when they have all four wheels. It's crazy. I'm sure it wasn't a funny moment, but were you driving and then you saw it like pass you on your right side? And you're like, that's my tire. <laughs> <laughs> I did, actually, yeah. <laughs> Nice. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be over here. <laughs> uh, okay, interesting hand. Access to basics. Cool. Swords for an answer for a creature. Cool. Knight as a threat. Cool. Um, wasteland. Pretty cool. Again, soul lands. But no bangers. No force of vigor. No moxen. They're probably the big ones that I want in an opening, especially on the draw. Yeah, I really like this hand on the play. I don't love it on the draw. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you get that chance to, to fetch. Like, there's definitely a world where we don't get that chance. Ooh, okay. Like... Yeah, the first hand is like one I would never fault anyone for keeping, but like I wouldn't have kept it either. Hmm. Um, it's pretty good. Probably the ramen app we can drop here. Yeah. And probably just hopefully Mox into turn one reclaimer. Oh, leyline. All right, opponent multi six. It was really good. We bottomed the ramen app. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's very true. Double sword, okay. Uh, I guess uh, Leyline does turn off the flagstones effect, which is, is relevant with uh, Reclaimer. Of course. That's double white. And yeah, as you said before with uh, like Collector Oof, this is definitely a start where Oof is kind of just a dead draw if you do draw it. Like, we definitely don't want to cast it here where Mox is really our big source of, uh, of mana. Speaking of dead draws... <laughs> Can you give that joke like a 2 out of 10? <laughs> um, okay. Wasteland here does put them off three mana, um, unless they have a soul land. But it's obviously tough when there's cards like soul lands, of course, and like the uh, the den is another good wasteland target. Yeah, I mean, I think the question is like, what are you scared of them playing? And like right now there's like, I just don't know that there's anything we're overly concerned about. So I don't think slowing them down is like super relevant here. So I think I would hold them. That's a really good question. Yeah. Like, um, we're not scared of a, a creature. We're not scared of Trinisphere. Um, Chalice potentially, but surely like that's not too far fetched for them to just draw into a land and cast anyway. So yeah, I think maybe then we don't play the Wasteland and just play the Blast Zone. Ooh, nothing. Um, well, do you want to put this up to three counters over time? Yeah. I liked your your excitement in that year. <laughs> nice. Okay. Two 
tomb. Boom. I guess like a planeswalker would be pretty tough. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> but we do have Blossom. I thought they were kind of off planeswalkers. Caught off guard a little bit here, but this is going to be fine. I guess Magus is annoying because it will take the counters off the Blast Zone even if we remove it. Oh well. Oh, won't it? Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, Blast Zone for four also hits the Ley Line as well, which is interesting. Okay, this is. I actually hope they. Oh, they don't cast it? They go for Magus. Uh, sure. Nice. Swords. Tick up. Nice. That's actually quite a nice draw. Um, I think we just blast in here so they don't get any uh, action off this Chandra. Yeah, big agree. Yep. Uh, and then we can actually just play the... F uh, actually, sack this first. Uh, we can play the flagstones here to hold up swords. Uh, keep this one. And probably just go and get... A planes? It means it like... If for some reason they play a Blood Moon, we then have access to like both basics in one turn. So we can like hold up swords and also green suns, which is cool. Nice. Look, that sword is just going at that Goblin Rabble Master because of the choice of Rabble Master they chose. Let, let's get the uh <laughs> I love that Rabble Master. Let's get the originals going. Uh probably Knight of the Reliquary here. It's gonna be a 4-4, which is nice. And it can start hitting their lands. Rebel Master's fine. Um, so dead is only two damage. So like blocking here doesn't really do anything. I'm just wondering if we want to block with Dryad Arbor. I think we can just keep the Dryad Arbor in the deck. If there's any reason to make the Knight of 5-5. Five five. So one of the things that letting it be a 5-5 five five does is plays around Fury. But also, you know, untapping with the Knight plays around Fury on its own. So mm, That's very true. And they only have one card in hand, which is nice. I didn't realize that. So I think here we actually just block. Um, I'm pretty happy to fetch for Dried Arbor here. It's definitely a card I don't want to draw. One piece of the puzzle would be great. Come on, stage. Ah, oh, so close. Still pretty good, though. Um, I think there's a world where if they go for... Like, if they draw Magus of the Moon, or... Bl yeah, Magus of the Moon, then we could potentially be able to sword that after we get Dark Depths in play. So maybe we can hold off on the swords here. Because we have pretty good defenses as well. Hey, Paul. Tough spot for them. Oh, 
What are your thoughts on these lands, being lands and spells? They're, I mean, they're just kind of exactly the kind of card I like. One of my, um, one of my big tenets of magic is I like lands that do things. Nice. <laughs> that leads into Thespian Stage pretty well. Um... There's nothing that really kills the knight if we block and make this a 5-5, five five, other than like Chandra tick down deal 4. Well, we still have Sajiri stuff in our deck, so there's nothing that kills the knight here, period. Yeah. So I guess we can just... I guess the question is, uh, like, at instant speed, is there a way for them to do it? I guess with two cards, Fury could if we, like, knight for stage. Or knight in, in response. No. Yeah, that's true. I guess we just block and then make them do something. Fury is sorcery speed. And then three mana. Ah, oh, it's just one damage. That is going to be fine because we can just suck a land here, right? Yeah, so I guess the concern is if they follow up with dead, but like, mm. I think we top deck way better than them anyways. Yeah. Is there a way? Because if we get at Thespian stage, uh, we can get the flagstones into the bin as well if we need an extra land, because we can copy it and just drop this flagstones. So that gives us one extra, two extra. Dead is, uh, dead is an instant though, isn't it? Uh, dead is an instant, correct. Yeah, so they'll do it in response to us tapping the knight. Ah, uh, okay. I guess we will see what happens first. Actually, flick green. Okay. Um, sure. Uh, I still don't mind getting stage. No, oh, yeah, I like that. Nice. A few live draws, which is sweet. Um... Probably just holding back the dried up now. But definitely nice that prismatic ending with like a blood moon effect is, is the three colors we need. We only really need four mana because that's just like green suns for three. I think getting this off the field is quite nice whilst still having two... Uh, spells in hand. City, zero cards. Ooze. Okay. It's not the perfect drone, but it's not the worst. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the screws might just play defense here with like the one green up to eat something and make it a 3-2. Wasteland. Um, I think we want to eat at sorcery speed. Yeah. I'll definitely I eat. Get another egg on. The question is, like, is Wasteland here helpful or not? Or just keep it for, like, Den, specifically? Copy it, copy Den, and then Wasteland it? Like, six mana isn't too... 
Like, other than, like, six mana Chandra? Like, would that be in the deck? I mean, historically they've played it, but I don't think they would have it post board against us. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> it's just... I, I think I think we have an out to den in our own den. They play the land, okay. Hardcast Fury is also a big thing, that's very correct. It's a great draw. There's a Fury. Okay. Al, I guess getting the two damage in is relevant. <laughs> but we can, we still have lethal with like swords on Fury, untap. Uh, we can't deal with, I guess we can source that as well. Five, they go to 27, but then we have a 7-7 seven, seven and a... We'll have a 9-9 nine, nine and a 20-20, which is pretty good. Attack for six. That's fine. I guess if we're... I see no reason not to just take it. Yeah. Just in case of some sort of spice. They keep a card in hand. Also having the crop here for Sajiri step is pretty huge. Nice. Yeah, ending hitting bridge is nice. Um, also just like not needing to use these yet was quite quite good. They They didn't really have too much aggression on us, which is pretty nice. Which doesn't typically happen with with Prison. I usually always feel under the pump. But hey, we're 2 0. The deck's good. Yeah, it is. Who would have known? Who would have known? It's interesting to know as well uh, how many SCG cons uh, with, with like a legacy portion have there been this year? Um. So first it was uh, Philly had one, which Ezra won with Depths, yep. and then um, ND, which was won by Theo Jung on Delfer, and then Pittsburgh, which, you know, Rodney and I won with Depths. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Pretty sweet hand. Probably just Savannah into Dried Arbor, and then hopefully Sylvan Library and Swords on turn two. Love it. Nice. Hey, Echo. Hope you're well. Do you have a favorite Wasteland art? So I think that you're going to hate me for saying this. I think uh, the newest one, the secret layer is really cool. Uh, I like original frames way more than current frames, though. So... I'm still rocking the originals, but like if I could get the new art in an old frame, that would make me pretty happy. Yeah, that that, that, that makes sense. Man, Tempest, it doesn't get it doesn't get better than than Tempest for me. Just like probably it was one of the first like legacy cards I, I purchased as well, getting into Death and Taxes. Yeah, I just um so I don't know if you know the secret layer one I'm talking about. But it's like got a destroyed library of Alexandria, and I'm not really a big vintage player, but I just think it's like I really love those kind of like Easter egg reference type things. This one, um, 
Yeah. Okay, that's so very I cool. Just think that, like those kind of the things really make me smile. Yeah, Ancestral Recall is in the background of an ooze. Did you see that? No. Oh. I don't think oh. so. I'll find it. It's like a weird ooze as well. It's not like a mainstream ooze. This is always a tricky one as well because uh, Flutter Strand opponents typically play Tundra, uh, but this could also be like Delva with Flooded Strand as like their extra fetches. So like playing the Wasteland plays around days, but also playing the library into a Tundra. Brainstorm allows us to Wasteland Tundra. But I, I don't mind the subtle pressure Wasteland also puts on our opponent just to get a basic. So I guess it's like this, and then we can still attack with the Dried Arbor. What about Brainstorm, Mapson? Are you a uh, McKetty and Masks fan? Ice Age? Uh, I, I never remember which art is which. I, the Mercadian Mask is the one with like the yellow dots around the head, right? Yes. And then Ice Age is like the almost the, like the darker, like the angry looking guy one. Yeah, it kind of looks like Dr. Jero from uh, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the reference. Um, nice. I, I really like both of those, and Oof. I don't know that I have a favorite. I tend to alternate back and forth depending on like what feels right in my heart for the deck I'm playing. Yeah, cool. Okay, nice. Uh, interesting. I did not expect Swamp here, and Night's Whisper makes me think this is going to be like a Grixis Control style deck. Why are they not just on iteration? <laughs> like... <laughs> um, so, I, oh, this is quite nice because crop means we actually have the combo up if we really wanted it. But I think here we just pay to have extra cards in hand against a deck with like Hindered Terex. Oh, it could be Doomsday. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, Doomsday would make sense. And they have the days. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like Goblin Lackey won. Did I say that right? Plays a lot of Legacy online. Or at least plays, wins, rests. <laughs> Ritual. Okay. Grief. Is okay. this, uh, is this, well, respond, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so we can come into play and then we'll respond to the trigger probably by getting rid of the dried arbor. Uh, I would keep the dried arbor actually. Okay. I would pitch the wasteland. Cool. I think this might be reanimator. Ah, on like um, a slow start. And if it's reanimator, like blue black, then uh, there's a non-zero chance we get archon here. So we just mm. want the extra creature. Like... I don't think it's super likely that happens. That's a great point. Almost free to play around. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one because we can keep the dried arbor. And if we, if we lose the Savannah, we can then I'm just trying to think if there's a reason why uh, floating the manner of the wasteland that we sack and our opponent making us go to second main might get us. Like making us have to make it in main phase one. I don't think so. I think I'm just overthinking things. 
I think it's fine here to crop away the wasteland and then just I mean, make the 2020. We could, crop, we could crop away the savannah if you're worried about it. Like, I don't think it's a huge difference. I just don't think the wasteland is going to matter. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on point there. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. I think I'm just overthinking something. Days. Um, okay. Tragic. <laughs> Still happy to get depths. Uh, and then I, I, I feel like we sort on the grief. They take the grief, and even if they get the grief back, they get nothing because it's us oh, non land. Well, the grief's not going to rank because they dark ritual into it. Ah, uh, true. Unless they have like a reanimate spell. So, like, I don't know. If it is Omni, then I think using the swords kind of makes sense. If it's reanimator, I don't like using the swords because if they take the swords and leave us with scavenging use, that could be better for us. Like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. That is a pretty good point. And also. Gaining three, putting them to 18, and then potentially without fetching, they could Archon back up to 21, which is a little bit awkward. But Omni's sick. I haven't seen a black, blue Omni deck in a long time. Um, yeah, Eli makes a good point that, like, Reanimator's not super likely to play Night's Whisper, but... Mm. I don't know. It's, I feel like it's just so much more likely to see someone on Reanimator than Omni. <laughs> like, my brain is almost forcing that to be correct. I'm pretty keen to hold up the swords here. We will have the extra mana, which is nice. Oh, that's actually quite nice. And they took the ooze, which makes me think that they do want to use the graveyard. So I think putting this on top and paying for the second green card is pretty good. Yeah. Reanimate a show and tell. Yeah. Hmm. Is Knight's Whisper target player? No, you draw. Okay. It's not a sign in blood. I was, I was thinking of like, take three, go to four, and then like, ritual into double Knight's Whisper target you. But we do we do out to that with like sorts of plush heads, which is cool. Okay, well. Nice. I always hear that like fluttering heart before this happens. Like, is it like a main deck brazen borrower? Like they're making it <laughs> they're making us go for it? What is this? Um Okay. It's hard to put into words how much I hate Brazen Borrower. Yeah. Uh, I think because they took the ooze, I like the, the endurances and the deafening silences. They seem great against what they were doing. And then... Hey, Granham. Thank you very much for the follow. And the raid, of course. Apologies, the raid. Um, hope you had a really nice stream. Uh, the blast effects... I mean, I, I think I would bring them in because we have them being on show and tell or reanimator and either way, post board, I expect them to have show and tells in their deck. Mm. That's very true. I'm going to say then the prismatic endings can come out. Uh, probably the Rian the ramen app, a bit too slow. Uh, you know, it's funny. I typically keep that in against reanimator. Um, I don't think it's great though, so I'm totally fine with cutting it. Okay. Um, I don't love Sylvan Safekeeper because I just, like, I think yeah. it's fine in play, but I don't think you're ever tutoring for it. Yeah, great point. Uh, Mox did a nice to get out. Sylvan Library there was fantastic. Ooze is strong. Um, um, I'm okay cutting a Wasteland. Cool, yeah. 
they're playing prismatic vista like they're <laughs> they're clearly not super concerned about winning land yeah that's very true um hmm. that's okay Grantham. i'm very bad at magic so i'm just holding him back he was going <laughs> easy on you wait did you say that or did i say that because i could say the same thing <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it could just be a library. I really like having library against black decks, though. Fair. Fair play. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know. I have a knight. Probably. Yeah. I was going to say a knight for the endurance. I think knight still has game, but I think endurance is just like a little bit better of a three drop, especially if they are on reanimator. You don't always get to the stage to actually cast knight. Uh, Christian, we don't know if we need two <laughs> steps, but we're going to just leave them in. This is a nice hand. Yeah, hopefully we draw a green card. Yes. Um, or something like Ponder Pass. But we do know about Days as well, so... Well, I guess Swamp doesn't mean Ponder Pass. Oof. <laughs> opponent saying get rid of that um I'm so we can make happy to play the of Maya here yeah cool uh i was just thinking if there's any reason to hold up the sword i mean also defensible <laughs> cuz this is half the combo which is quite nice and then the extra land, if Windswept is a white source, it can also be like a crop rotation target. Hey Ramar, welcome. Hope you're well. Have you been, uh, I've definitely been got got where I've played Yavimaya against like lands game one and they just like have not had a green source, but they've just been like using mine the whole time until I can get rid of it. Where they've I gone, have like... had that happen. And so now I try to be very mindful of that. Yeah. I've had an opponent go like turn one, like maze of it into exploration into like stage pass. I was like, no, uh, wish claw. Okay. Is this 10 fins? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this really put me off. I'm not too sure. Uh, I feel like by, you know, turn two and game two, I typically know what my opponent's on, but I'm, uh, still not sure. <clears throat> I guess like reanimator siding into Oracle could also be a thing. Cause like graveyard hate doesn't really do a whole lot unless it is insurance. It's tainted pack. Okay. Tainted pack. I believe that's one and a black sorcery. instant yeah it's tough because like i guess grief is the only creature we saw and it could just be an alternate version of removal oh sorry our hand disruption for the deck uh they chose not to shuffle Um, last turn. Do 
To be fair as well, with your line of turn one Yav, that does turn on Thespian stage as a live draw as well. If we did go ahead with Winsup Teeth and drew Thespian stage, it would take another turn to combo off. Um, what are your thoughts of Endurance here as a, as a beater? I, I think we're supposed to hold nine. Yeah. I kind of put them on a graveyard-ish deck. Yeah, and if they're on a graveyard deck, or if they are on um, Untainted Pact, either way, Endurance has some amount of game. All right, Tainted Pack. Exile the top card of your library. You may put that card into your hand unless it has the same name as another card. Exile this way. Repeat this process until you find a card. Okay. So if you play like a singleton, you're just going to get it because there is no second copy. Hmm. They must be really missing something here, because Wish Claw is one piece of the combo, or one one card they need, and they have six cards in hand. Obviously, just need one more card. Yeah, and it's kind of scary, right? Because they kept their ponder. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't mind playing the plateau here because it represents red mana, like for a blast. Well, so does Windswept Teeth. Yes. Look at that. Okay. I don't feel too naked here, which is nice. You know, it's a really good feeling when your opponent activates Wish Claw Talisman and then doesn't kill you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if it is a storm based win, they have to take the swords, or else, like, swords at 2020 is kind of hard to get above. Um, two, four. Cabal still taps for three here. So, I'm thinking Christian was right with the second, uh, or with the, um, the Pyramid of the Abyss Storm Gasp, but we're definitely going to find out. Four, six. So, does this add five once it's resolved because it is the seventh card no. or not? Okay, cool. No. Hmm. All right. No mana floating, and they've cast a, a spell for turn, so they do have to go off the, the pedal lines. At least we know that Oof is good. My only question here is, uh, is there a world where taking them off the extra two mana of the Cabal Ritual going to change things? I would be surprised if it matters, but it's also kind of like, you might as well. <laughs> mm. It does add an extra storm, but I think that's okay. But their storm counts at 10, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, because my, my only other thought is that we can um, Swords the 2020, which we need uh, four mana for in total. But I also need the crop for that. I, I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll see how they how they go with these. They obviously, I assume they play Hand Disruption that they will use before we do anything. Maybe even now because we waited for so long. <laughs> Yeah. 
Hey Echo, there's the grief. Mm. Honestly, like, get to sack this. I wonder if they run counter magic. No. Uh, they probably have packed negation. Yes. spell don't do it hmm okay I assume here they will see that they can just most likely tendrils us oh rain of filth nice I do like rain of filth rain of filth is a, a card that I very much enjoy Alright, combo. <laughs> I think the swords can come out. <laughs> um, oof. I don't mind the chokes on the play. Again, they kind of just yeah. do more than the swords. And then maybe even... One more card. Maybe just the Wasteland? Based off of the way they played out the Wish Claw Talisman and didn't use it, there's an argument for Force of Vigor. It's yeah. not like... It's not mind-blowing. It could very easily be completely dead, but... Yeah, even like with the Deafening Silence lines, like if they try to... If we get a Deafening Silence down, they might try to like play out an LED early or something like that. Or especially a Wish Claw. Uh, yeah. My only other thought was trading Blast Zone for the other Wasteland, but I think that's still okay. Uh, no green matter. That's a bit re big reason to drop this. Hmm. Hmm. This is painful. I, I would go to five. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a good five as well. Hmm. Then we have the wasteland to try to get us back into it. So we can put the dried up to the bottom and then probably between the force and the night. I think the force. Yeah, because if they like I... turn one thought sees us, we then have two good turn two plays. Oh, they also went to five. Excellent. Nice. I, um, fair game. I don't know why they changed the way Mulligan's a Peter on Moto, but like it throws me off every time. Is it how they don't show it at the same time? Yeah, so it shows over in the like in the game log, but it used to be like you could look at their hand and you would see it go like seven, six, five, four. Yes. It, yes. It just stays at seven until it's like, oh, they're at three. All right. Hmm. Definitely 
hearts. Oof, so close. Uh, I don't mind hiding the wasteland this turn. All right, Mapson. Uh, what is the most amount of dried arbors you've had in play with depths? Three. Hey, same. And they all got terminus away, but they got in for like maybe nine damage, which was cool. Oh, mine started like trading off with ice wing waddles. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ooh. No real bangers, but. I mean, the choke could be pretty strong. It stops like an end turn, like brainstorm, or at least punishes it. There's an argument for the knight because it's a shuffle. Yeah, I don't know which I think is better. I think this is definitely going back. I, I don't think yeah. we're going to go to to eleven against uh, a deck with. That. I think I just like slamming the knight. Yeah, okay. Do you like keeping one piece of the combo then? Oh yeah, absolutely. And then I assume next turn will most likely be uh, holding up the combo, but then also Wasteland, which is good uh, mana denial, so the choke might even not get played, so there's probably a, a reason not to keep it and just have the full life. Yeah, that's fine. Nice. And then they did have days in game one. So we could play Wasteland here, play Knight, and then next up we can just play Depths, but then still have Knight up for Truth. Yeah. And then we should um, we should make sure that we crack, um, crack the Knight on upkeep. Nice. Yeah, to get a fresh look. Hey, Hackbert. Hmm. Oh, double fetch. That makes me think of Echoing Truth. Yeah. Okay. So he's asking a very important question. Um, will you be at the Legacy Pit? Sadly not. Uh, I wish, but sadly it's not in the in the books for me. One day. Well, it's not that far from Australia. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, my, my company does have offices in the US as well, which is quite nice. Ritual, ritual. Oof. I guess we six that. Uh, this is game three. Uh, I work in uh, SEO, which is uh, search engine optimization. Which the basics of it is, uh, yeah, driving organic growth to a site. Here we go. Cabal, nice. Grief. Cool card. I really like this card. Oof. They massacred the dried harbor? Oh, God. <laughs> That's just <laughs> Who does that? Uh, 
Uh, look. Uh, we're currently two, one. All right. Back in it. That's fine. That's fine. I feel like those are... Those matchups can be tough without that turn one kind of deafening silence or having some sort of real interaction. Mason. Hmm. Oh, okay. Look. This is a turn three. I guess it's not a turn three with prismatic. Because you have to get the white source in there. I always feel like hands like this are such a trap. Like, if they just play a wasteland, <laughs> then what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, that's very true. Like, um, yeah, I think there is a, a better six. Uh, like, these three lands aren't really needed. Look, as a four, I would keep it. <laughs> but as a seven, I, I think we can find it a nice sweet hand like this. Probably just putting back the step. Yeah. I just think this hand is so much better than that one was. Like, yeah, it doesn't present the combo super fast, but like, we're in the play as well. Present the combo super fast. I would be playing a green black version of the deck. Yeah, very true. We get to actually like cast spells as well. It's quite nice. Once, okay. I like that this could be a few things. Okay, well, it's going to be a depth deck. Oh yeah, this is the person who plays uh, the black green version, isn't it? Oh, cool. Okay, that's really cool. I um, I played a great black green version for a bit with Saga, which is kind of nice because then you get a, a nice Plan B. But I, I do also. Let's see. Okay. Uh, like the versions that just go kind of more all in. Do you know if <clears throat> Do you know if they are the um version with like Elvish Spirit Guide? Oh. Huh. Um I think they are on a slower list with Doffy Voidwalker and okay. maybe Bob. Yeah. Does that I kind of feel like library here is better than holding off the reclaimer. Yeah, I mean library is really good. <laughs> Nice. Get in for that damage. Okay. Does the stage at all signify a weakness in their manner? Like, if you draw, like, a removal spell for the Bob here, are you looking to Wasteland at the same time? I'm not. Um, I totally get the temptation. And having the Elvis Reclaimer out, like, I do think it's kind of fun. Right? Because you can, like... Because you can always just find another one. But I, I'm not convinced that's what it means. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. Hmm. I'm pretty happy keeping the second flag and the green suns. I'm not sure about the planes. Yeah, I agree with that. Ooh, I was told we're a coward if we don't pay eight, so. Look, we'll, we'll take it back. All right, sorry, chat. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. What's, what's the, uh, what's the Reclaimer gonna be getting? Um, so. 
most likely I would probably just get a second wasteland in the turn. Yeah, nice. Okay. Wait to see what they're doing. Yeah. Does that make you want to wasteland this turn with the spare mana we have? Not totally. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This matchup's so weird. I'm I'm very patient. Um, yeah. Cool. I do think wastelanding is like totally fine. I was gonna say I would play the wasteland out. Okay. I just use it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's something that I can definitely do better for my game is being more okay with an untapped wasteland. Because there are games with Maverick where you need that mana more than you need to take your opponent off the jewel they have in play. And a lot of the times I just get kind of fed into the idea that like if I have a wasteland and it's untapped, then that just isn't isn't where I want to be. Yeah, I think it's like very important to know kind of what's important in this matchup, right? And it's so contextual, it's very difficult, but it's just like, the Thespian stage doesn't necessarily mean all that much. They have so many ways they, they combo back together. Like, I want to put them in a spot where it's just hard for them to go for it at any given moment. So I think having like those wastelands out and ready is just kind of important. Like, I yeah. think if you just proactively wasteland them, they can rebuild fairly easily. And I mean, there's a limit, right? Like, I know I've definitely played plenty of games where it's like, my opponent should wasteland me, and I'm just, like, dead if they do, and then they don't do anything. It's hmm. kind of awkward to know when to go for it, when not to. But Yeah. Uh, what do you think about, like, block and step here? I... It's kind of my first instinct. I also like almost wonder if it's a trap. Uh, I also yeah. wonder maybe they don't want us to play two steps and they just want one gone because step can be pretty big in this matchup. Um, hmm. I, what, I also think they could just be trying to prompt us to get something that's not wasteland, but since we already have the wasteland in our hand, I think that's okay. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it could also mean they have like a second bot that they might not want to have both out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty Hopefully keen to. I do. <laughs> Look, we're in alternate reality now, so. Flagstone's just so nice here as well. Being able to build out the mana, but also get wasteland. We know two cards, Hex Mage and Dark Depths, but right now their mana just isn't really playing the game they want. Okay. Interesting. See if they respond. No. Uh, Sav. Waste. going to say there's also always the argument to get your own thespian saved so you can kind of go off with their dark depths yeah that is a great point i kind of hope they're just going for like thespian stage copy planes here no okay fetching and then not doing anything is kind of interesting mm. um okay I guess if we deal with the confidant, we then have one mana left over. Because we'll most likely play the second wasteland, hold those up. One and one for prismatic, one left over. I guess that's quite nice because it means we can also just reclaimer, also hold up reclaimer with wasteland plane. Oh, uh, yeah, wasteland planes and have wasteland still open. So I think we don't need this. But I probably... I don't mind going down to six. Like, this is a pretty good card to pay four for. Do we really need two of them, though? No. That was that was the one thing that I was thinking of, and I was like, he said it, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, try this first. Uh, 
Um, so I don't. I'm trying to remember if they play Spirit Guide because that kind of vaguely affects what I want to do here. But I think it's just the flag zones. Yeah, I was trying to think if we like needed the wasteland, but I don't think we do. Hey, Strass, always take eight. Yeah, oh, I think we actually were supposed to play the wasteland. Such a minor thing. I don't think it'll really matter, but like they should copy our wasteland here, um, and so then they have the answer for our wasteland. But we know they have the hex mage and dark depths at hand. Uh, I mean, it's not a big deal because then we can just get Caracas in a turn. Yeah, very true. But that's a, a great spot. Because um, I guess even then there's a world where we could allow them to have the Wasteland and we could Wasteland a Bayou because if their turn, if their land for turn is the Dark Depths, they don't have double black for their Hex Mage. Unless they What's have like up, Mark? crop into something. What are your thoughts on Once Upon a Time? In depth. I love that card. Mm. It's obviously quite powerful in Elves, but you could say it's also nearly more powerful in... I guess because Elves finds both the high end of Cradle and then the Elf creatures, but in this deck, it finds all your Tudor creatures and also your lands. So you're, make, you're making like both ends meet up really well. Yeah. I don't love it in green-white. I just feel like kind of hard on the curve you want to be playing so much to the board but i really mm. like it in green black i think it ties a lot of starting hands together yeah it's always nice to play free spells This card. Yes. All right. Yes, this is it. All right. So this card, the blob over here in the background is Ancestral Recall artwork. If we get in there. There! How cool is that? Such like a small thing. But I'm pretty impressed. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I think we just go for Krakus here because we have the second waste. Yeah, I'm not too sure who found that, but very cool to the person who did. All right. Uh, Krakus, I think. Then again, like, stage is kind of cool as well. I think I like Krakus. Yeah. We have more chances of drawing you to stage as well, naturally, so... Wonder if they're playing Peseju. I would assume so, somewhere in the 75. Ooh. Huh. I think we just keep the crop here. My goal then... is to never put Dark Depths into play. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I don't feel bad about just leaving Endurance up here instead of like green something for night, but. Also getting a shuffle there to put away the bog in the dark depths is nice. Which we do have to reclaim it anyway. Hmm. 
Hmm. I actually, I think, yeah, I think having a like double wasteland and Caracas up is just a lot of hate for Duck Depths. That getting a knight here should just be able to, yeah, get our, get our beat down going and pressure them into putting them into a, a spot where they might not want to go for it. It's funny now. I wish I had the. Um, I, I wish we had the uh, the green sun zenith that you thought about taking earlier, so that we could green sun for ram now. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. So then I think the game's just over. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of a lot of interaction from our opponent to get through our interaction. This is probably one of the like best matchups to show where like life is the resource, especially with library in play. Like, I don't believe there's any reach out of the opponent unless they went like step pro green to hex mage attack for two. That's probably the way they they win if we do go down to two. Okay. I wonder if they play not of this world. I don't think you can play not of this world and dark confidant in the same deck. Well, Mapson, let me tell you about the text on dark confidant. Greatness, <laughs> greatness at any cost. <laughs> uh, Natural Knight is pretty nice here because it is three mana and allows us to hold up crop still. Um, the big Q is, are we happy to attack with a Knight? I don't think we need to. Okay. Like, I don't think it really costs us anything to, but mm. just. Yeah. I also uh, think for what it's worth, uh, by the way, our opponent has sequence we can tell that they have a crop rotation in hand because they have an Elvish Reclaimer that they haven't played. And like the only reason to not play it here is if you're leaving up, activate uh, the combo and have crop rotation up. Nice. Michael Mapson, everyone. <laughs> nice. That's a really good read. Um, Cause yeah, for one like instance, that's, that's really all it can be. Um, so those two are gone. So we know about the Reclaimer and four cards unknown. Just to be clear as well, Hex Mage target Duck Depths, we can let this resolve and then this goes on the stack and then we can Wasteland it. Yep. Cool. And then they can copy it with Thespian Stage. <laughs> yep. And then have to Wasteland that. Yep. Nice. Dress. Hmm. I think we use the crop here. And I think yeah, I probably just want to get a either a fetch or a stage. 
I would go for stage. Cool. I mean, it barely matters. <laughs> yeah, I think it might just give our opponent a little bit more to think about. Like, oh, what does stage do here? Yeah, Star Fox saying that the uh, duress might lead to a... Oh, they're going to crop in response. Okay. Potentially ghost... Oh, they're in Wasteland. Okay. That makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. We're going to win this fight. Yeah. So if we play it's it out... Trying... Sorry, Sorry, you go. Were you... No, you're good. I think they might just be trying to put us in a place where our wastelands are all in the graveyard so they can Majuka bog us and then like try to rebuild, but that doesn't seem like a winning play. Mm. Yeah, especially being at 11, like these two knights next turn are going to be lethal unless they bog. But I think we, we definitely... So the opponent is typing in chat right now that they screwed up. Yeah, just saying uh, maybe the Duress first wasn't that great. I think we definitely use this on the Duck Depths. That's step one. And then seeing how they react. Uh, they targeted our Wasteland, yeah? Yes. There's also an argument for just targeting the Thespian stage. Mm, making them stage first. I mean, they can just target the Forest, though, so it's like not a great argument. Hmm. This on this, this on this, this on this, and then they stage, boom. But then we have double Krakus up as well. Like Krakus and then Krakus again. And they still have the Reclaimer in hand, so the other two cards would have to be two um, not of this worlds, but then we still just have Lee. Mm, close to lethal. I'll be honest, I think it basically doesn't matter what we target, as long as it's not by you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, surgical on That was line. unexpected. Um, okay. That's fine. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, no, it's not too bad, because we still have one in play. So we can just get the second yeah, one here. Wanna... Yep. Main deck surgical is spice. I always love it when, it, when you get a good stack going as well on, on MTGO. I do love the depth matchups. I find them really interactive. Another crop. Okay. Are they going to crop again for Wasteland, potentially? And try to get rid of the one in play? Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess we might as well float a mana. Oh, 
Okay, well, that locks it up for us, though, at the same time. Yeah, because the last card in the hand is the Reclaimer. Huh. Yeah, this is tough, because now the Wasteland's targeting this. It goes... Is this our crop? Yeah, it is our crop. Classic. Um, yeah, like even there we could Blast Zone, put it up to two, untap, Blast Zone, and then attack with everything. Really tough one. This is actually a matchup that I struggle with sideboarding, because I find in the mirror, a lot of the cards are already pretty good. Like, is it, like, an, another answer for, like, Pithy Needle that you want out of the board? Yeah, it's funny. So, I am I'm generally pretty good about mapping out my sideboard when I put decks together. This is definitely not a matchup I was mapping for, but um, I think I would literally just run back the same 75, or the same 60. Yeah, nice. Um, cool. Um, I, guess I think my, if, if I... Is kind of bad. Yeah, maybe like instead of Ooze playing the Liberator, just as an, a Green Sun's target for a map. A Needle, sorry. Actually, do we think Ooze or Endurance is better? I don't, I don't know that they even have a way to use their graveyard. Um, but if they have like Ramming App, then Ooze might be better than Endurance. So you don't necessarily mm. want to shuffle their cards back into their deck to make their crop rotations live. Yeah, I think Endurance is really just for us if there was going to be a benefit of it in the matchup. But I think with Ramanap, it's probably good enough. It, there's going to be a, a low amount of times where it's like Endurance ourselves in response to a Surgical is what saves us. Like, going to 21 is, is pretty good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See how this goes. Oh uh, yeah, endurance blocking um Marilyn is relevant, I guess. Yeah. Opponent could have Life to Loam. We only really saw creatures and then the usual cards you see from a, a Depths deck. Hmm. Interesting. A pretty nice hand for a game that goes long. And I, I feel like they wouldn't go for a very early, like, all-in. Not that interactive, though. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> we have a game to lose it's fine <laughs> yeah I don't mind like something like a turn one thought sees or duress on the library means we just still have a backup library which is kind of cool surgical <laughs> uh I feel like surgical is one of those cards. Even there's um there's a really good hashtag on Twitter called don't surgical that or you shouldn't surgical that I think it's called. And there's some funny ones. I think it was Jason Murray who had like surgical on like Cathar Commando, but he only played one. 
I feel like people do stuff like that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, even on Depths, I find a lot of Delver players love to bring in Surgical and hit Swords to Plowshares most of the time, or that's kind of their second way to deal with Dark Depths. Nice. I think Cliffy started it. Hashtag don't surgical that. Nice, okay. Um, I, I don't think they're going to combo off. I, pretty happy just flagstones pass. It's definitely green source next turn. So maybe it is just... It would have to be the nuts. It would have to be... Um, Bayou, Dup, play Dark Depths, crop Bayou away for, for Urborg, play Hex Mage, make Dark Depths pass. It's definitely not these. I don't think it's Forest either. Maybe it is Forest. Forest holds up crop. They know about the Wasteland as well. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Wasteland Pass. Like, they, they might do something like Wasteland the Wasteland and then, like, crop away the Bayou, but as, like, a just-in-case, it's... I guess the only reason not to play the Wasteland is that if we are casting a turn two library, we do have to tap the Wasteland. So that's a chance for them to actually Wasteland our Wasteland without us being able to use it. And there it is. All right. Here's the crop. All right. <laughs> they took it a bog. Swords. That's pretty nice. Still pretty happy to get this library down. Stage. Bottom. Oh, we have Caracas here, which is nice. So let's pay for this. Uh... Plateau Pass, Mapson. Sorry, I muted myself because my dogs were barking really loudly. Um, no, that's fine. I love dogs. So. <laughs> they are. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so good. I think I heard one of your dogs say Plateau, so I'm going to play that and pass with Swords and Crop Open. Um, this is fine. <laughs> just the bark of small dogs, just, it's so hard not to put a smile on your face, just knowing how excited they are.
Okay. Do we have the luxury of swordsing this reclaimer? I feel like if we don't, then it just turns on Sajiri step for them. And if we drew into Prismatic Ending, we're probably just targeting that needle anyway. It's not like using the instant speed sword is going to be something that I... Hopefully don't regret. Okay, don't really want any of these. I think you're actually supposed to take the arbor. It is a second green, which is nice. Yeah, we really need that. Yeah. Um, I will dig a little bit though. And I think again, it's just pass with crop open. Because they can. <laughs> <laughs> Cool choice, and ba cool choice in basic forest for my opponent. And I've just realized that they've actually chosen <laughs> and copied my basic forest. So they didn't choose this art. I did. I chose the cool art. But good on them for, for choosing this one. <laughs> um... Maybe they drew a uh, right of consumption. I wouldn't put it past them. We can't wasteland, so we just have to go for a Caracas here. Look, I, I, I don't mind this. This is pretty cool. It's like a dude. Can anyone see the guy like kind of doing that? If we bring it up again, just kind of having like a dance, doing like the uh, the matrix kind of tree fall. You can see it, right? You can see it. Please no right of consumption. Please no right of consumption. Ah, classic. Yep, it's going to target us. We're going to deal a lot. Nice. Nice. Um... Doesn't change things too much. My only thought is down a dark depths up a force of vigor just for pith and needle. Hey, white hyena. You still see it? Nice. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad that people see that. Imp's Mischief would be cool there. Veil of Summer would be cool there. Um, yeah, this is a pretty nice hand. Again, Green Suns turn to Sylvan Library. It does have the depths, but we have Mox Diamond to draw into that could discard that. Green Suns. I wonder how many monsters they play. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Deflecting Palm gets around Leyline of Sanctity. Because I think it is like the next time a source would deal damage. The next time a source of your choice. Yeah, so you don't target, which is very cool. Which I'm not sure if you can name true name, if you can like say true name Nemesis. Backslash. Backlash, sorry. 
tap target untapped creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power to its controller. <laughs> uh, the evil trash truck has finally left. <laughs> uh, I meant to cast something just there. That's all good. We're all good here. Um, I think it's just going to be swords and then library. Sounds good. Uh, I'm probably going to hold the Caracas then and play the Wasteland. We know they have a Wasteland in hand. There is also like a little world where we could possibly go for the combo at the end of their turn next turn. But it does involve them going land this turn and then next turn they could also get a Lage themselves. Hmm. Interesting, just fetching and passing. Put on top. Don't want to give them more green. Hmm. I don't think we're going for the combo because if we did it would have to do it now to play around their wasteland. Also and that turns on their stage. You go, also, sorry? if they just have crop rotation in hand, then doing it now is pretty weak. Yep. Okay. Can't do it now, but I was going to say we could uh, could have actually just end of their turn, uh, turn the flagstones into a blast zone to get rid of the pithy needle to turn our wastelands back on. Oh, nice. I actually like that a lot. Um, I still like that because I do want the shuffle as well. Yikes. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. oh god. Oh god. That's a that's a screenshot moment. Oh god. <laughs> uh was not playing around agent. Uh oh, we don't have to use the ability, which is nice. But they get to crop for a land now. That's so brutal. <laughs> On the plus side, our only Dark Depth and Caracas are both in our hand. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, I 
There is a world where I just want to swords it now. To play around like a like some sort of a Sajiri step line where it just gets really out of control. The question is do we take out the take out the stage while it's tapped? We can't. Yes, correct. That is a, a good observation. So I, I will actually six here. We're also down on time, so. We probably just want the shuffle here. Yeah. No stage copy, okay. Yes. Fresh look. I'm going to do this now just to get in for damage at sorcery speed. There is a world... I, I could have not played the Krakus so they can't copy it to have it for depths, but I feel like they're playing in a way that they're just going to hold up the mana for the depths anyway. That I, I don't think... I can actually do something pretty funny here. I can copy this, but then keep this one to stop them from getting that version, making them have to kind of tap out again. I think now it's just a race for night and try to beat down that way. Nice. Well, we found it. Also, like, subtly, it's quite nice that the Green Suns gives us a shuffle as well.
Hmm. I always get hit by the uh, the red light of the clock. Just like troubles me a little bit. But I think we're going to be pretty good, if, especially if we find a second green suns here. No. I'm also going to hold this as an unknown, especially with the needle turning everything off. Okay. Um, do I want the shuffle of the night or the damage? I think I want the damage of the night. I'm just hoping that that extra card on the top is good. No, but, oh, it actually is quite good. <laughs> this is also presenting lethal if my opponent doesn't block the knight. I didn't really think, but I'm not sure if it's better to do it just now to get it done with, or to like attack with the knight first. I think we were supposed to attack first and okay. wait for them to declare no blockers. Uh, interesting. Yeah, there we go. That's a good There's point. There's just a little bit less that can go wrong. And like, also if they just block with the reclaimer here, then this feels kind of silly. Yeah, that's true. I always get this part mixed up as well when they don't block. Like, when have they not blocked? Because sometimes it feels like that it jumps between and I, and I miss the chance to, like, say, wayside myself for lethal. I feel like, like, is that priority passed? Yep. Um, now is now's your time to do it. Yeah, I think I kind of have to. So I was gonna say the concern is if they just like Bajuka bog us, but then yep. they block. You're gonna do that. I think my opponent might not have seen this line because they just typed no in chat. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, I like that they floated the prop decay mana. Make you think. Yeah. Wait, where'd we? Oh, because I miscounted. Yeah, sadly I need the one extra, so I need to get that <laughs> Savannah. Nice. Oof. Nice. All right. Look, we can finish full one. We can finish full one. That'd be kind of cool. The agent. I thought the agent was going to be a clutch play, but thankfully it wasn't too bad. That was really brutal. <laughs> was, <laughs> was so brutal. Uh, <laughs> um, do you have a dark rich? Do you say duck rich? Yeah. So I was I was gonna say dark depths mirrors are just like my favorite magic. Yeah, because as you said, crop rotation that would be brutal as a blowout. 
All right. There's just spatula. so much back and forth. Ugh. Enchantress. Yeah. Nice. What a, what an emboss to go out against. Hmm. It's it's tough main deck as well because typically the basics they or the lands they enchant are basics, so wasteland isn't that great. I think this is like a fine keep. Yeah, we keep this. Opponent on five, or at least Mulligan to five, which in a deck with a lot of card draw isn't too bad but obviously something that's a nice hedge game one for us have you played against much enchantress re recently i mean i don't think i've played against much enchantress lifetime <laughs> <It's just not laughs> that's a that's that's fair, yeah. Like, I know Destiny Spinner is a nice way to, to win. Uh, and, like, Doomwake Giant, potentially? I'm not sure if they still play, like, uh, Emrakul. One of the things is I feel like Spatula of the Ages has, like, a new build of Enchantress every week. Mm. So it's really hard to keep up with what they're doing. Yeah, okay. Uh, huh. How fast can we turbo, turbo towards Lage? Uh, depending on draws, it looks like we can make it turn three, which is definitely the plan that I'm on. Yeah, is that off a Dried Arbor or just getting a turn one Reclaimer? So I was thinking about turn one Reclaimer. I mean, you can get Dried Arbor. I mean, Dried Arbor would give you the same speed if you draw a piece. Yeah, so if you reclaim it here, Savannah, Depths next turn, two mana up. We can then just turn the Savannah into a Thespian stage and then hopefully draw a land off the next two turns. Yeah. Nice. Sav. So a lot of people play Outland Liberator main deck, and I don't think it's a very good main deck card, but this is definitely a matchup where it makes you feel real silly for not having it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Lands is a pretty nice one as well, where it's typically not too bad of a matchup either, but um, it's quite nice to be able to have that a attack trigger, so it gets through like Maze of Ith, and usually has something to hit, like a Exploration or, or a Mox Diamond. And being a 3-3 three, three as well is relevant against uh, Punishing Fire. Elephant Grass. All right, Michael Mapson, without looking at the card, please tell me what Elephant Grass does. Elephant Grass is a cost of single green mana, nice. and it has cumulative upkeep one. Uh, black creatures cannot attack. Non-black creatures must pay one to attack. One, two. They must pay some amount. Black creatures just can't attack, period, though. Nice. That was pretty spot on. <laughs> um, oh, this is nice, because now we can just turn this Dark Depths, spare one, into a stage. Oh, and then we have the other Dark Depths here. And then we can also find a Wasteland for the Caracas over time. Two. Okay. That was pretty spot on. Like I've uh, I've played my share of legacy. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. This is another um, matchup where Blast Zone actually comes in handy too. A lot of the yes. transitions are just one CMC and no longer their two drives have shroud or hex proof so yeah 100 percent. enchantress is just like the elves of like this other permanent type 
right. Um, probably pretty happy just to get Wasteland first and take them off the Krakus. Another Swords. I don't believe they run a main deck way to get it back. So I would green sun for Arbor here. Ah, really? Instead of going for stage, I guess that that does mean we have to draw into a a land off the top. Yeah, I guess it's kind of the same thing either way. No, no, I think what you did was better actually, sorry. To be fair, like, uh, if you do go for Arbor there, you also get mana up here to take them off this uh, Harvester. Stage. Hmm. And now it's kind of rough because... We're in a situation where we either want to swords this or green suns for a dried arbor. I think that's just swords. The chances of drawing a land are relatively high, and the chances of them killing us if they have uh, so many extra draws are also very high. Oh gosh. Didn't think of this. Probably sh should have. If I had like a deep thought about Enchantress in 2022. Wow, does it keep the ability butt? Crazy. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, you have to admit that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, that is very cool. I wonder if I have to worry about more of these on the 2020. Sorry, I, I wonder if we have to worry about more of these on the 2020. <laughs> Alright, Paladin class. Spells your opponent's cast. Cost initial one. Creatures you control whenever you attack. Jeez. I mean, look at that. Like, they're already up to eight cards. Insane. These decks are very cool. I, I do love that a deck like Enchantress is, is in the deck in, in the format, a little bit like how Lands is in the format. Just very unconventional styles of of play. And like obviously building your deck around uh, a tribe, but not a creature tribe, a card type. Hmm. I was wondering if they were playing any copies of Devoted Druid. Nice. Okay, so now we have infinite mana. So I'm assuming we are very dead. Yeah, I just asked what the uh, the win was. Oh, they can Living Wish, I assume, and just show Ballista. Or oh, Emrakul. Emrakul's pretty good. Nice. That makes sense, because they used to play Living Wish for Emrakul anyways, because they can just generate a bunch of mana without going infinite, so... Yeah, very true. Uh, oh, Deafening Silence... Outland Force. They're probably the big ones. I don't think we need Bog. Yeah, I mean, that card it doesn't do anything. Uh, Historically, I would have said we don't need Step, but I guess that's not true anymore. Yeah, very true. Um, ooze for Outland Liberator. Yep. Would you ever uh, drop a sword? 
I have mixed thoughts. Like, swords is, like, not... I think with them having devoted druid and Sithis, you have to keep Yes. It. Yeah, that's a great point. It's a really good point. Um, hmm. I'd probably drop Caracas. Yeah. Nice. Done. Yeah, every time Enchantress gets new toys, I just like Oof. feel the, the urge to try it. And uh, I hadn't even considered throwing the Devoted Road combo in here, so like, this will be tried. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, this is a sweet key. Tome on Silence, turn 2 Library, turn 3 Night, or Green Suns? I think with them having Swift Reconfiguration and Caracas, like, I, I do think Safekeeper is good. Yeah, especially seeing that Swift has Flash. I wonder what they bring in against us. Especially with the Living Witch, Witch Package, you'd probably just keep the Caracas in the sideboard if you don't have ways to search for it in the main deck. Opponent on five again. I mean, they draw so many cards. <laughs> it's yeah. Like the end of the world. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to play the Yav because it does turn on the line of play a piece for turn and then have crop in hand if for some magical reason those cards are in the top three. Fantastic draw. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we can't sadly cast the mocks and swords this turn. Because we could, like, in a world without the silence, we could cast the mocks, pitch this, play Remanap, get this back, and then swords and upkeep. So we actually can. Which is kind of cool. Uh, I, I think that's... Pretty good. I think that's better than like Swords and Reclaimer. Yeah, I like that. And the next turn I would get um I would get Liberator. Yes. Nice. Reconfig is a blowout here. I guess I could also just respond to the first <laughs> card. I think I will actually just respond to the first card they they cast. Yeah, that's a good point, Hyena. Have you in the past played with like Crows and Grip for any particular reason? Um. I don't think I've played Crimson Grip since, like, Counterbalance, since his Divining Tap was in the format. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I see it pop up every now and then. It's always interesting. It is a nice way to, like, know that a Back to Basics isn't going to survive or something like that. But it's always hard when you have, like, real, like, heavy hitters. Ooh, okay. Like. Uh, Seeds of Innocent or more, like, flexible cards. Wow, there's Passing Back. That's actually pretty fine. I think we'll find a land off the top to play a knight here. So I also just think the Seiju does a similar thing to Crest and Grip at this point in time. Like, I don't know why you would play Grip over the Seiju. Yeah, good point. Forest, forest, basic. Um, I will pay four. Hmm. 
This also means I could uh, just green suns for. Hmm. I guess if yeah, I have you to. Can... You go. Sorry. I was gonna say yeah. That, I mean that makes sense. Green sun for it for it now, and if they like if they do infinite mana on our turn, it doesn't matter, and then we can just break it up in their like on our turn or on their upkeep. Mm. And by it, you mean Atlan Liberator? Yeah. Yep, nice. <laughs> Fetch Swamp. Tap for two mana. Nice. Are you at all surprised looking, I guess now that they've been out for a while, how much play Hull Breacher does see play or how much it sees play and how much... Um... Oh, they're going to target this. I'm probably okay with that. That's unexpected. Yeah, like the Ramen Up isn't really doing a whole lot here, which is kind of nice. Um. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand what the point of that was. Like, I, did, I almost wonder if they targeted the wrong thing. Hmm. Uh, how high are you on not casting a creature next turn to get this to flip, potentially? Or you rather, like, get a creature into play? That is a big question, my friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm okay not playing the creature. We're not under... I mean... I feel like their deck goes from zero to a hundred pressure really quick, but not until they can deal with the deafening silence. Yeah. So I think, you know, if they can only deploy one threat a turn and we can automatically answer a threat for free each turn, that's pretty good. Hmm. Very true. I, I feel like, is it cast out that is most likely their only way to get rid of the deafening silence? Yeah. Which I don't know if they would be on cast out and swift reconfiguration at the same time. Mm. Okay. I'm always intrigued by Living Wish and like what sort of piles there are in different sideboards for Wish players. It's a card I wish they'll more play. Um, I know Ely Cassis was playing it in green black ups for a while. I played like a while, like a long time ago. I played like a Bant version that played Living Wish, and that deck was really cool. That's cool. I, I just think that card's so fun. Is it Jeff Lynn who is behind Esper Vile? Yes. Yeah, I saw him playing a version with Vile and also Living Wish, so you could put the creature in at instant speed and not lose that momentum, which is pretty sweet. Oh, that is cool. Uh, seeing they played Living Wish there, are you pretty keen to s just hold the swords for now? Or use it here? Hmm. I think using it makes sense, right? Because we can get rid of the Druid and then not worry about it. And then we can blow up the Sithis. Hmm. I guess there is a reasonable argument for keeping um, keeping swords for it. like if they have the seconds of this, but if we have the night out, we could just find a Krakas for it anyways. Yeah, great point. Although, I mean, I guess they have plenty of mana to use it once and then buy a thing. Yeah, this might just be hard cast solitude.
Now we can just probably trade these. I think that's better than to try to target one of these. Yeah, absolutely. I have two cards left. Now we can also just go ham with putting some more creatures in, in play, which is nice. Um... One, two, three, four. Here's a world where I like this just being dried up. I guess, yeah, because then these become four fours after this blocks. I can't pay eight though, but I can pay four. Oh, we have the extra mana over here as well. We can honestly even just get another Reclaimer. Yeah, or a Safekeeper, if that's worthy. Safekeeper makes it also uh, hard for them to attack, because we can just sack lands if we really wanted to. Like if we sack one land now, the Knight can block, which is kind of cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven. Hmm. Three cards in hand. Oh, so we can, we can crew this and, and ride it. <laughs> Interesting. Does this keep the, you may play land in the graveyard ability. So it's kind of like, just like a crucible. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. We can ride the snake. Nice. That's obviously an Australian term. Hmm. I wonder if they're getting this time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a Pride Mage? A uh, Gothian. Oh, getting a Chantress. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, now we have the Caracas up, which is nice. Playing the stage here means we just have the combo up, which is cool. Um, uh, which means I can actually use the Reclaimer to find Dark Depths. Which means I can use the Knight this turn on the hand if I want to. Which is pretty cool. Because we have one, two for this, two for Reclaimer, and then two left over. So we could nearly cast the Knight as well. Like this for Krakus now. Oh, am I not seeing it? Oh, we boarded it out. I forgot about that. Oh, <laughs> we did too. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's all good. Ah, uh, that is all. G. Um. I guess we might as well just get taps. Yeah, and then recl yeah, this is still good. This is still good. Hmm. 
<laughs> I wonder if we were just supposed to make Marilage on our turn, because I wonder, like, what are the chances they played the Sage you? Yeah, that's true. Um, potentially pretty high. Not the worst, as we do have Ramen up to get back one piece and then Reclaimer can find the other. He is two mana. They're going to wish again. <laughs> um, potentially really for... Pot yeah, potentially for either... I guess we don't care about Caracas because of the Safekeeper, so it should just be make it now so they can't Wasteland it. That has to be it. Yeah, I, I agree. But a land or creature. I'm trying to think of like a creature now that gets that destiny spinner. Okay. I was going to say destiny spinner is actually like Okay. Well, that doesn't doesn't quite do it though. Uh, this is fine. They're gonna try to go to twenty one here, but we can block and then give pro. They've already cast a living wish for turn, so they can't cast another non creature spell, which is nice. think opponent who was just trying to buy a turn yeah the wishes make it kind of hard to to sideward against because you're not too sure what they took out but then can find it instance or sorcery speed in the way um i think it is worth bringing in the caracas and then maybe just taking out a wasteland potentially yeah they're that on a fair bit of basics hmm and then that's probably the only change. It's always weird to me that their deck doesn't play more copies of Sarah's Sanctum. Like, I feel like that card's so busted. Oh, it's not a four of? No, it's usually only like a two of. But it's like so what weird, hell? right? Because like you never see elves play two Gaius Cradles unless they just couldn't afford it. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of works on the same curve to an extent. Another great hand, like Turn 1 Deafening Silence is exactly what we want. A little bit awkward otherwise, but not too bad. I'm pretty happy with this hand. Having the Blast Zone in it's also really good. Yeah, very true. Alright, opponent kept seven. No, Damn it, Naps. Uh, I thought they... Did they grow up one? Oh, they mulled into six, okay. All right, Sav, boom. Oh, I wonder if they have a way out of this. No, just going for the Enchantress. Library, is library better than Reclaimer? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think the argument for me right now is what is the fastest way before they can deal with the deafening silence. But also potentially finding instant speed interaction with the like druid combo. Yeah, if we're worried about druid combo, then someone library is correct. I think there's also 
just an argument for uh, I mean it doesn't matter now but I was going to say I think there's also an argument to just play Sigiri step in Greenstone for Arbor just to accelerate our mana so the next turn we get more options yeah that also turns on the line of drawing one piece of the combo then having crop up but yeah it's it's <laughs> it's funny because not like we went enchantment into enchantment our enchantress opponent didn't even do that they went <laughs> enchantment into sorcery ah and there's i guess yeah the stage is there um put on top probably pay for the night play this oh actually man is pretty rough here So what we can do here too is we can green sun for uh soul and safekeeper. Which yeah. will shuffle when we find an untapped land and then we can just go for the combo. Nice, I like it. Probably should have just played the step there to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, getting that extra white source is actually very relevant. Yeah, a little bit too trigger happy there. I apologize. Things happen. It's also very late for you. So like, I don't know how you're still functioning <laughs> this well. Yeah, it's quarter past one. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are you hanging that? I've been having the same thought. It feels like some of these living witches should have been getting those cards though, if they existed. Okay, that's pretty good for us. <sighs> nice, untap source, that's all we wanted. I guess like a force of vigor would be sweet off the top, but put on top, put on top, land pass. One, two. I guess they could have like an end step cast out. Is this step for three? Uh, let's see. Wild growth adds two mana, right? And an additional, an yes. Additional. Uh, so one, yeah, two, guess, yeah, I three. Two would be positive. Oh, nothing. Okay, that's huge. Yeah, well, cast out costs four. Yeah, which they could do off the planes and then one, two, three, four. No, the pundit doesn't add. Oh, it doesn't. It's just any color. Gotcha. Okay, there we go. Oh, what is paladin class? Oh. During your turn. Tough. Oh, yeah, we needed to... <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I should have caught that. <laughs> no, no, that's more than fine. I guess my only question is, do we just blast zone here? And get rid of no, four? No, we... Yes, yeah, very true, yep. Um... Hmm. I guess we can still crop if we want. I'm definitely fetching, because that's a shuffle. But there is a case here too. I would put a counter on the blast zone and then just untap, I think. Nice. Like, I still think we're going to go for the combo, but there's, like, not really any upside to doing it now. There's... I don't know what would make us want to blow the blast zone instead, but... Mm. Conceivable. 
Yeah, I think it would probably be um, if they played Heritage Druid into Swift Configuration, then we could take that out with Blast Zone. Hey, Andres, thanks for the follow. Apologies for the delay. Ooh. Not as good with the classes, but. <laughs> Put on top page. Yeah, it'd be different if we had a. Different if we had a Yavamaya. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Uh, so I guess we just go for it here. Yeah, but we don't. Like, after we crop rotation, we don't even have to necessarily make the Merit Lage. Like, I still think that's ultimately going to be what we do. Yep. That's a good point. Depths. Is this a free attack for one? It's probably free, but technically endurance exists and they could have it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I would, I would be shocked if they did, but. Never know. Hmm. Okay. There's no reason not to go for it here, right? They've played a non-creature spell for turn. We have Safekeeper in play. I guess Besaju is the only card, right? But I mean, that's not a reason to not go for it. Yeah. It is Besaju. Then I guess here, uh, is it worth using the Force of Vigor with two mana and exiling a card? Oh, we can't because we've cast a crop rotation, so. Two, three, four, five, six. We could cast two, two drop, two, three drops. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking. Uh, sorry, my my screen has gone very blurry. But both of their enchantresses cost two mana, right? Uh no. The the presence is three mana. Oh yeah, it is three. So sadly, never mind. I was gonna say, let's just blow everything up. Uh, yeah, okay. I think I like playing Ramen out then. Nice. Ramen up. Get back stage. Mox. Pitch step. Fetch. Uh, is it worth playing the knight or holding up Force of Vigor? I feel like it's okay just holding up Force here because we lose to the Druid combo and the knight really just gets us Dark Depths, which is already in the bin. Yeah, I, I agree with your assessment. Tough though. What are they targeting? The Remnant. The, they really don't like us half. <laughs> it still does the same thing. That's true. I actually didn't need to save it, to be fair.
nothing other than the Druid combo. So I know it's not the right play, but like, I really just want to force a vigor both of their, their enchantress's presences. Yeah. Mm. It's wrong. Like, yeah, because because then we still have the the blast zone up if we really need it for the druids. That's true. Okay, I'm okay with it then. And I think getting rid of the knight is potentially better than getting rid of the green suns because the green suns is anything. Yeah. It is an extra mana, but. Hopefully that's okay. All right. Oh, a second silence. That is quite good, but liberate is also quite nice. I think the second silence is probably where I'm leaning towards because we can play it off this and then still hold up dark depths. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and then we still have three mana left over as well for the uh, the blast zone. Uh, it's too late. I was going to say we should actually make the Merrily on our turn. They yeah, that's very true. Yeah, they can't really combo because they have to cast yes. Swift Reconfiguration and Living Wish. A hundred percent. Uh, I was just thinking about Caracas, but of course we have Safekeeper. <laughs> yeah, I literally just walked ourselves into the same situation we had last time, which is terrible. I think in response to this, I'm just going to make it. Uh, no, I guess my reason not for making it was in case they go off with Druid combo this turn. But they can't. So they play with a swift reconfiguration, and then what? They can't. They can't uh, living witch for the Emrakul. Of course. I guess like their out would have been devoted to its swift reconfiguration main deck density spinner, but yeah, yeah, destiny spin is a, a tough one. Because I, I believe the creature also has trample, or maybe that's incorrect. Maybe it's more like a raging ravine. Yeah, full bigger from their end is, <clears throat> would be pretty strong on the, on the double deafenings. Nice. Hey, we got the four one. Which is pretty cool. There's a good sweep suite of decks tonight. Doomsday, Enchantress, uh, the green black depths deck, the mono red stompy deck, and the combo deck, Peer into the Abyss. Yeah, definitely an inter an interesting assortment. Yeah. Um yeah, pretty happy with how the deck played out. Pretty consistent. Uh, obviously against the fast combo decks, you can have a tough time, but there are some tools in here which, which allow you to to have some game, which is nice. Um, and yeah, cool to play against Depths as well, even if it was a, a different variant. Yeah, again, I just, I, I love any kind of Dark Depths. There's, there, there's just so much going on. So much of it like isn't on the battlefield and it's kind of like, oh, you did this here, which kind of like implies you have this. So like five turns later, I still have to be thinking of that card because I don't want to get blown out. But like, I just love that stuff. Pure magic 100%. to me. Yeah, especially when you have to go like, uh, even just like say if there's like multiple ways. Stage is just going like, we have to have this and then we have to go like. Yes. There's a lot of back and forth, which is nice. And a lot of. Um, but yeah.
Uh, really good to have you on. It's been a long time coming, I feel. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun being on, so thank you. Uh, can people find you if they're looking to get some uh, some more maps in? Uh, so I have a Twitch channel that I never use, but you can follow me in the hopes that maybe one day I will use it uh, at Expedition Map. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Expedition Map, or you can listen to my podcast, The Dark Depths Podcast, coming out every Wednesday. Nice. With uh, Billy... Uh, Billy took down an Eternal Weekend last year, didn't he? Yep. Nice. On Delver. Uh, um, which is really cool. But yeah, uh, going over modern and legacy content. Do you go over like other competitive uh, formats like Pioneer as well? So like every now and again, we'll like have an episode dedicated to Pioneer. Like we had one dedicated to Pioneer. We did one like kind of dedicated to Popper. We did one dedicated to Vintage. We don't talk about them too much because we don't play a ton of those formats. So we try to, you know, talk about what we know. Nice. That's cool. Also, I see Chad is saying your mic is cutting in and out. And I'm I'm sad that's happening, but glad to read them saying it because I thought it was just my headphones. Oh, really? Interesting. I've been having these really weird audio issues lately and it sucks and i'm now starting to think it is something in discord but uh i'll leave it there a huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching a huge thank you again mapson for coming in and playing uh i'll be back most likely on thursday but until then uh i'm gonna see who else is streaming i think silavatu is who is a well-known legacy i can't say their name right but uh they always play blu-ray delva and i know they're pretty good at it so enjoy that and uh yeah a huge thank you again mapson i'll uh hopefully catch you on the next uh dark depths podcast yeah thank you cheers guys